Today we will discuss the transfusion practices and complications related to transfusion of blood and blood products. What are the basic objectives of this course? The basic objective is to understand what is the early resuscitation of a bleeding patient, rational use of blood and blood products because we use them extensively in the critical care environment, detection and management of various transfusion reactions that can occur after the blood products, how to manage an ongoing blood loss and blood transfusion in stable anemic patients. We start with a case scenario. This case scenario is basically a 48 year old male who suffers a road traffic accident and presents to the ER with trauma to the chest, abdomen and bilateral femurs. As an intensivist on duty you are called to assess the patient from the ICU. He is confused, lethargic, you take the blood pressure, he is hypotensive and he has tachycardia with a heart rate of 152 per minute. So as an intensivist, the first thing that you need to see is your clinical impression about the patient and how you can manage. So there is a clinical way of assessing the blood loss in trauma patients as you are dealing with the hemorrhagic shock secondary to polytrauma and blood loss and you have to quantify the blood loss and there are ways to quantify. This is a table which shows the classification of shock based on in, in, in ATLS uh, protocols and divided into four classes, class 1, 2, 3 and 4. Depending on the blood loss, the pulse rate, the blood pressure, the capillary refill time, the respiratory rate, urine output and mental status, we divide the patient from class to class 4. If you try to fit our patient, he has a blood loss of around 2 liter, expected blood loss. His blood pressure is low as we can see. His pulse pressure is also low because the systolic blood pressure is 70 and diastolic is 50. So it's a narrow pulse pressure, uh, uh, narrow pulse pressure. Capillary refill is decreased. Our patient is tachypneic, if his respiratory more, his rate is more than 35, you put them under class 4. Why this classification is important is because this classification helps, helps us in deciding the fluid displacement strategy. In patients who are class 1, class 2, the fluid replacement is basically with crystalloids. Patients in class 3 and 4 will require crystalloids along with blood transfusion. So that is because the management change accor changes according to the class of the patients. It's very important that whenever you are dealing with the hemorrhagic shock, particularly related to trauma, that you classify the patients and have an expected blood loss uh, in your mind before you start transfusing.